Hello everyone, my name is Robin Hazard and I'm an interpreter at Morro Bay State Park, a part of California State Parks. And right now we're in the Morro Bay Natural History Museum and we are going to do a tutorial, a how-to, on how to draw a sea otter. Who knows what a sea otter is? Has anybody seen a sea otter or know anything about them? Well if not, we're going to do a little diving into what sea otters are. So I'm going to ask you to grab some sort of piece of paper and a utensil. This could be a pen, a pencil, I've got a marker here. And we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with a circle. And this is going to be our sea otter head. This is the start of the sea otter head. Two circles there for sea otter eyes. We've got a little snout here, as well as a nose, and then we've got a mouth. So here we've got our sea otter head. We're going to add some ears to this head. So we've got our ears, our eyes, our nose, and our mouth, all making up our head here. Now. We're going to draw the sea otter's body. And you can kind of draw it like a pear shape. A pear or a cucumber. And you're going to draw a similar line following what you've just drawn. So go ahead and take your time and draw that sea otter body. Just like that. And I do want to preface that I am not an artist. So anybody can do this. So we've got our head, we've got our body, and now we've got some feeties. So these little sea otter feeties, just like that. Because in this picture, this sea otter's laying on its back in the water. So he's got his feet up like this, and we're gonna draw these little paw pads, just like a dog or cat might have at your house, those little paw pads, four on the top, and then a bigger one down below, just like that. So we've got our full body here, and now we're gonna start with some facial features. So sea otters are warm-blooded, just like us. They're a marine mammal. So just like us being mammals, but they're marine mammals which means that they live in a marine environment, or the ocean. They're ocean animals. So being just like us, they have warm blood. But this water here is really cold. How do you think they survive in this cold water? If we were to go into this water up to our necks for about an hour, we would probably get hypothermia and freeze. So when we go, we typically wear wetsuits or have something to keep us warm in this cold water. But it would be kind of silly if a sea otter were to wear a wetsuit. So what do you think it uses to keep itself warm in the cold water? Go ahead and think about it for a second. And I'm going to give you some hints by drawing. Has anybody got it yet? They have fur. They have so much fur, actually. They're the furriest creatures in the world. So I'm going to have you do one quick thing. You can go ahead and put down your utensil, your writing utensil, for just a second. And I want you to look at the back of your hand and draw out one square inch. One square inch. It's about the size of a postage stamp. And on that one square inch, I want you to think how many hairs are on one square inch of a sea otter's body. You can write it down in the comments below. Go ahead and tell uh, a person next to you and discuss it with them. How many hairs do you think are on just one square inch of a sea otter's body? You ready for the answer? One million hairs. They have one million hairs on just one square inch of their body. Can you imagine how much fur is on their entire body? It's a lot of fur. 
So that's how they stay warm in the really, really cold water. It's by having all that fur, that insulation that keeps them nice and warm. So now we're gonna draw, go ahead and shout it out if you know, some whiskers. We're gonna draw some whiskers here. And they use these whiskers, they'll swim on the bottom of a kelp bed and they'll use those whiskers almost like fingers and they'll feel around for any food, any invertebrates, which is the kind of food that they eat. It's usually something without a spine, maybe a sea urchin or a clam, and they'll use those little whiskers as fingers to feel around for food. So we've got whiskers here, and now let's go ahead and draw some arms. We've got an arm there, and then we've got an arm here. And now, we're gonna draw, as some people may not know this, we're gonna draw a tail. Because sea otters have tails. And they use it kind of like a rudder, like at the back of a boat, moving through the water. They can use this tail to help them swim through the water. So this is one sea otter. We'll give him some eyes, or her rather, we'll give her some eyes. But sea otters really like to hang out together. And when they hang out in a group, what do you think that's called? When a group of dolphins hang out together, it's known as a pod. When a group of wolves hang out together, it's known as a pack. What do you think it's called when a group of sea otters hang out together? Go ahead and think about that. And while you're thinking about that, I'm gonna go ahead and start our second sea otter. Did you come up with an answer? When a group of sea otters are floating on the surface of the water together, it's known as a raft, a raft of sea otters. So now we have our second sea otter here, and we're gonna call this mom or mama, and this is gonna be her pup. So this is the pup here. We've got the pup's head. And just like the mama, we're gonna draw some ears, we're going to draw some eyes. We're going to draw the snout. Let's color in these noses here for both mama and pup. We're going to give those eyes some personality. And now we're gonna draw the sea otter body. And remember, it's kind of like a pear shape. So you're gonna draw that pear shape. And then you're just gonna draw another one just inside. And remember, we need to stay warm as a sea otter. We need to stay warm in that cold water. So this pup will also be getting some fur. Very important to stay warm in this cold water. And because they have so much fur, they actually have to groom that fur a lot. They groom that fur for around two to three hours. Two to three hours every single day. Do you groom for two to three hours every single day? I hope not, because that's a really long time. But these sea otters, they have to, in order to maintain this beautiful furry coat, they need to groom themselves. And how they groom themselves is with their little paws here. So they'll take the little paws up and they'll make little massaging movements around their face and around their whole body so that they can circulate that fur, get air into that fur, and move out any gunky stuff, making sure there's no knots or tangles, just like how you might brush your hair every single day. So we've got our sea otter body. Now we're gonna draw some feet. Again, these sea otters, they're hanging out on top of the ocean surface. They're floating on the top of the water. So their feet are gonna be sticking up just like this. 
And remember, we've got our four little paw pads and then the bigger one down below, just like a cat or dog that you might have at your house. And another reason that they bring their feet and their arms and little paws outside of the water is because there's actually a little bit less hair on their feet and their paws. And so when they bring it out of the water, it keeps them warmer rather than having it submerged under that cold water. So they're keeping themselves warm by leaving their limbs above that cold water. So we've got our feet, we've got our arms, we've got our whiskers, and now we're gonna put some water movement. Oh, and we got a tail. Can't forget that tail. Remember, they use that tail to propel themselves through the water. So we'll put some water movement around the tail. And then you've got your sea otter. You've got your mom and your pup. And now is the really fun part where you can start coloring it in. And you don't need me for this, but I am gonna use a brown for their fur and the blue for their water. So you can color in however you want. You can make these sea otters purple if you want. This is your drawing and nobody's is gonna look like yours. Because we're all super unique. If we were to all draw the same exact sea otters, that would be kind of boring, wouldn't it? So when we all have something a little bit different, it's a little bit more fun. Got some blue squiggly lines for my water movement. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of my sea otter. We've got our furry, furry animals. How many hairs on one square inch of a sea otter's body? You're all professionals now. Go ahead and discuss it with someone next to you. Write it in the comments below. Go ahead and share your new sea otter knowledge with us, with friends, with family. And I wanna thank you all for joining us today in beautiful Mora Bay on the Central California coast at the Mora Bay Natural History Museum. And I'm so happy to see all of your sea otters. Make sure to tag us on social media at Morro Bay State Parks on Instagram or Facebook. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a beautiful day and take care of each other.